Today, we're diving deep into the unseen shifts within the big time game, revealing hidden trends that completely reshaped my short term outlook. Watch this now because what I've uncovered could change your strategy and view on the game, at least in the short to medium term. First, we'll explore the hidden trends in big time's growth and what this signals for the game's ecosystem. Then we'll cover the leaderboard and an unexpected twist. And last, we'll go through the covert moves of profitable whales in the market, buying up higher rarity assets, and it's a strategy that's going underneath the radar. GMGM GM to all the new faces and returning strategies, but before we uncover these layers of big time, a quick disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. You could lose money with crypto and NFTs. The crypto world moves fast. Always double check the latest updates before making any decisions. First, what we're going to do is we're going to go over Bitcoin's price because big time, like most other crypto, follows Bitcoin. We haven't seen the macro pump of this cycle. We're still going to the halving. Also, liquidity, rate cuts, and a variety of other factors that have potential for moving the crypto market higher if we head into those later phases. So here we can see that Bitcoin is currently under $70,000. It's probably going to range here, but when you go on a longer term time frame, if we look at the month, it is still bullish and it's upward trending. So we just have to zoom out. Knowing that it's understandable that big time right now is at about 36 cents because Bitcoin just took a little bit of a dip currently. So knowing those macro factors and potential price catalysts coming down the line, it has a potential for a larger setup, especially since the crypto gaming narrative hasn't really taken off yet. Those are the macro factors that we're looking at. So there is potential for pig time to have a larger leg up due to just Bitcoin's price action alone. But the question is, and the reservations that I had is can big time sustain its growth and interest of the crypto market? Because as we know, the crypto market is extremely fickle. And if you can't hold the attention, your project will die. One of the things that was interesting to note going to Dash Loot is volume has been increasing. Unique holders has been increasing. And then beyond Dash Loot, we want to look at website traffic to bigtime.gg. Yes, not everyone goes to bigtime.gg that's playing the game. We go to open loot, but bigtime.gg is more of an indicator for new player interest. And if you've been following this channel, you know that I've been skeptical about big time, especially because I've been looking at these growth numbers. If we look at January's website traffic, it was a 45% decrease from December. You can see right here about 313,000, which is still pretty good for games overall. Then when we looked into February, it decreased by 1% to 309,000. But one of the things that I noticed, these were things that I was concerned about because I could see that interest was starting to diminish. And at this time, there were other games that were increasing in website visits. So I was a little concerned. And one of the things that I started to notice recently, especially heading into the end of Leaderboard 3 and inside March, websites visits started to increase. Now we are at 444,000, which is a jump of nearly of over 100,000 from the previous month. And the month is not over yet. This is just the last 28 days. And then on top of that, organic search growth was up 13% in February. This is just the natural search growth for big time for different keywords that people are searching in different search engines. But one of the biggest factors that started to interest me the most was who was starting to get into big time. When you look at this, the United States was starting to lose interest, but there was traction within Indonesia, the Philippines, Japan, and Brazil. These were major segments that are important to Web3 Gaming and was also one of the biggest reasons for the explosion of Axie Infinity. Philippines specifically was one of the major countries that led to the growth of Axie Infinity. So now that I'm seeing these different countries starting to trend upwards, it's starting to make me more interested. And I started to be more hesitant of how much I was starting to de-risk at this time. But this was not the main reason of why I started to pull back a little bit. And one of the other factors was how competitive leaderboard round three was. The points were literally cut in half from leaderboard two to leaderboard three. But when you look at the numbers, from leaderboard two 
55 million for the top. For Epic BL, this time it's 62 million. And then we look at round two's cutoff at 25 and 26, which is about 6.7, 6.6 million. We look at round three's cutoff at 25 and 26. It's about 3.4, 3.4 million. When you double that, it would be expected that this point total would be about 6.8 million, which is still higher than the previous mark, which shows that a lot of people are still putting in a lot of money inside this leaderboard event. And I can attest to how crazy this leaderboard felt compared to leaderboard round two. And I'm working on a new video that covers the, all of the different mistakes that happen within leaderboard round three. But for now, let's just ignore that. I know everybody was up in arms with different issues that were happening in leaderboard round three. But the fact that even with all of those issues, when you look at the point totals, and I was going through and adding them, these were more than leaderboard round two. And when we look at the website numbers and the interest, it starts to make more sense. Even with all of that, I was still leaning towards de-risking my higher rarity assets, like I mentioned in previous videos. But here is what changed everything, is when I started to notice whales buying up higher rarity assets, mainly Time Wardens. And the cost of hourglasses started to go up. One of the things I noticed specifically with Yamo King, I searched his name up. And I noticed he had one of the highest profits besides the big time team inside the game. Then I went on Dash Loot. I went and I looked at what he was buying. And I first started to notice Yama King buying up legendary Time Wardens because I was eyeing them and seeing that they were going up in price. So once I started to do that, I started doing more research into what he's been doing. And he's been buying up hourglasses at the floor of different types of hourglasses and he's been buying up higher rarity Time Wardens. What he's been selling is legendary hourglasses that have significantly charged time on them. So basically what he's doing is he's charging around 16,000 minutes onto these hourglasses and selling them for around 5,700. So 5,788. So if we look this up on Open Loop, this is one of the hour, legendary hourglasses that he sold. You can see that the time remaining is at 15,879. And you're probably wondering, how do you get it that high? He probably sold this around 16,000 charge. And the way that he's doing this, you need higher level time wardens so you can get the multipliers when you roll to charge these. What he's doing is he's getting multiple rolls for multipliers on the bonuses for the hours charged or the minutes charged to these hourglasses. And then once he hits the threshold of 16,000 minutes, then he sells them for around $5,788. And this is what he's just doing. He's accumulating all of these different hourglasses, eventually getting them to legendary hourglasses, then recharging them and then selling them back to the market because there is an explosion of need for legendary hourglasses because the prices have significantly gone up because of added utility. So because of this, I held back on de-risking and I actually bought a legendary time warden to see if I can make this strategy viable. I'm testing. I do not know if I can make this viable, but based on what I've been seeing, it could be. But based on crafting time, I, I didn't buy a high level time warden. We'll see if this trend continues or if I'm going to miss the mark completely and have to wait till the next cycle and the next time that big time pumps in price. So before then, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be crafting and I'm going to recharging legendary hourglasses, epic hourglasses. So if I miss the opportunity to sell, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit on these hourglasses and wait for the next big time pump and then resell into the market at that point. And then when you can see here, if you've been tracking these time wardens, you notice that these prices have been going up and there are interesting opportunities currently as well. You can monitor these for different level time wardens. The most important ones that you're looking for are going to be level 10, level 20, level 30 if you have that type of cash. Keep monitoring this because when you can find one that's below what the previous ones have been selling at, there's a potential for a flip opportunity there, but this is extremely degen and high risk because any downturn 
could result in you losing that cash and that flip opportunity. So be very, very careful with this strategy. Here you can see Epic's Epic's earlier last few days were at 1800. Now the bottom of the floor is at 2280. More whales have been picking up Epic Time Wardens as well. And to be honest, I think we're hitting a price peak at this point because there weren't that many rare Time Wardens listed. And then now that we're hitting these upper levels, it looks like this is a price that people are willing to let go of their rare Time Wardens at. And if we go to Uncommons, you can see Uncommon Supply is low. This is what rare Time Wardens and the Epics looked like previously. And then once it got to certain price levels, people were more willing to list them, to let go of them because this is where they believe that it might be peaking at. I have no idea if it's going to peak here or if it's going to continue to trend upwards. I'm just trying to play the market and trying to see if I can get that whale strategy to work out. And the other thing I've been tracking is that overall prices of hourglasses have been trending upwards as well with the commons going up to 18 all the way to the mythic at 14,000 now and legendaries have been up as well at 4,649 and diving into this strategy, you'll see a lot of different people experimenting with recharging all of these different hourglasses and multipliers and then selling them at profit again. This is highly risky because any downturn could significantly decrease the returns, especially if you're getting into it now. Be very careful if this is one of the things that you're considering. But not everything is rainbow and sunshine. One of the things that you have to consider is token inflation. 14 days ago, this number was at 10.9%. Now we're at 13%. Keep track of this number. You can go to dune.com, data adventures, big time. Just search for that. And then you'll be able to pull up these metrics here. This is one of the things I'm monitoring to make sure that this does not get out of hand because if token inflation is too high, this is going to affect assets and this is going to affect the token price. So this is one of those things to keep in the back of your mind to monitor, to see how this plays out. The issue with these things is that we don't know when it's going to affect the market. All we can do is monitor it and watch and see. But on the bright side, one of the things that the big time team has done a good job at is teasing content and getting players excited for the future. I've seen more players excited about the reveal for this Lunar New Year mystery box with different things to be excited about, like legendary decorations, mythic decorations, and getting a special legendary ticket that we have no idea that you can redeem it for. Could be mounts, could be something terrible. We have no idea, but it's getting people excited and wanting to stay to see what happens next. And on top of that, they did a good job at teasing more content that is coming out with an AMA finally from the big time team with big time CTO, Matt Tonks. I like the fact that they finally get to speak on different points and get the community excited. One of the biggest things that I wanted to see was an announcement or just some type of content teasing out future content to get people excited and wanting to stay when the leaderboard round three ended. So one of the biggest concerns that I had was can big time keep up player excitement, anticipation, and have a significant token sync for big time to maintain token inflation and get ahead of that. One of the things that they announced subtly, because this was supposed to be the final leaderboard. And I went back and I looked at mods responses to everybody and confirmed that leaderboard round three was supposed to be the final leaderboard and they had no information on the future after that. A lot of players speculated that there might be another leaderboard and they were right. When you look at here, the official start date of round four. One thing to be aware of is the big time team could drop another mystery box sale and it tanks all asset prices at that point. We have no idea. They've done this in the past. We don't know if they're gonna do that and if they're gonna ruin the flipping potential of these different assets at this point in time. So be very, very careful because things are hyped. If Bitcoin has a further pullback, we could see that reflected in big time's price and big time's price is reflected in the assets themselves as well. 
but be very careful. It's highly risky, highly degenerate. So let me know what you think of Big Time's growth and what is happening currently with the whales buying up these higher rarity assets. What do you think of Big Time short term to long term potential? Love to hear your thoughts below. And if you enjoyed this video, I suggest checking out this video next.